Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I've said... So as I've said several times, I grew up in upstate New York and I grew up fairly close to Niagara Falls. So I remember going to Niagara Falls as a child over and over and over again. And it's incomprehensible the, how huge it is, how vast, how much water, 45 million gallons of water a minute. 45 million gallons of water a minute flowing over the falls. And you can take a walk behind the falls, into the caves behind the falls, and you see the water, and the water is a blue-green. It's not dirty, it's not brown, it is blue-green all the time. And this time of year, when it's been really, really cold for a really, really, really long time, and when you stand at the falls, you see icebergs, chunks of ice the size of cars going over the falls just rapidly. Incredible. Just unbelievable. And it was in the late 1800s that Tesla and uh, Westinghouse got together and said, let's put a hydroelectric power plant there. And they did, and now there's five hydroelectric power plants on both sides of the falls. <coughs> Excuse me. Converting that power of that water into electricity. And to me, that's just incredible. And as a kid, we took uh, tours through the power plant, and you could see the water rushing through and the turbines. And the, but to me, it was also kind of magic, still is a little bit of how you can make water become electricity and light lights hundreds of miles away. I don't know. But I also think about it. Because we live where we live, okay, in California, we've had a lot of rain. It changes our perspective a little bit. But the scripture was written in the Middle East, where it's mostly desert. And there isn't this abundance of rushing water. And many of our Bible stories, many, many of our Bible stories happen around water. I think about the parting of the Red Sea, where the people who had been enslaved in Egypt gained freedom through the Red Sea, God had the power to part the Red Sea, save God's people. And over and over and over again, God's people are saved by the power of the water. I think of Jacob's well. So Jacob was, actually it was his servant, was searching for a wife for Jacob, went to water the camels, and that was Jacob's to-be wife, watered the camels at noonday at Jacob's well. And to this very day, Jacob's well is now in an Orthodox church in Palestine. The water, the bucket goes down 130 feet. 130 feet. And the water comes back up, ice cold. And I can only imagine wandering in the desert, 90, 100, 110 degrees, and you come to this well that Jacob owned. But that's also the well where the Samaritan woman encountered Jesus. And he said to her, believe in me, I am the living water, and if you come to me, you will never thirst again. And even though this woman lived in the village where there was plentiful water that you can still drink of today, she said, give me that water that I may live. Again, the power of that water to transform, transform our lives, to save us, to redeem us, and to fill us with grace. So today, we start the season of Epiphany, and we come to the story of baptism, and we've heard the story of baptism of Jesus, I don't know, a hundred times? Many, 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 many times, and it's a short story. So if you, you know, like if you're not completely paying attention, it just flies by. But what we know is John the baptizer was sent out into the wilderness to call the people to come. It's time to come and make straight the paths because the one who is greater than I is coming. And he's calling people to be baptized for repentance. And that would have been something the Jewish people did and some Jewish people still do. It's not called baptism, but it is cleansing cleansing of sin, 
cleansing for health, cleansing to be whole and holy. But when Jesus came along, John the Baptist said, you should be baptizing me. John recognized him and said, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, no, it's right and proper that you baptize me. And then we hear the miraculous, the skies parted, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove, and we heard the voice of the Lord, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. And for the first time, for the people of Israel, they heard the voice of God. For the first time, heaven and earth met together. Human and divine mingled together and became one. And we heard Psalm 29. We sang Psalm 29 this morning. The voice of the Lord has the power to break the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord has the power to transform everything. We engage in the sacrament of baptism, and we have a gorgeous font that is a miniature falls, waterfalls. It's the living water. It's the flowing water. And I think about baptism as one of the sacraments, and the sacrament, of course, is the outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible grace. When we engage in the sacrament of communion every week, we are receiving an inward and invisible grace the same inward and invisible grace that we received in baptism. But when I see the water of baptism, I think of Niagara Falls. I think of the power of those falls. And I think of that as exactly like God's grace. That immense amount of grace and love constantly being poured out over us. Constantly, never-ending grace and love being poured upon us and we receive it inwardly. Now I know when I baptize someone, whether it's an infant or an adult, it always chokes me up to think that we're welcoming somebody else into the household of God, that they will be receiving the Spirit, that they will be transformed by this grace, that they will receive the power of the divine. And when I look at the faces of the family and friends who gather, it also brings me to tears, the joy on their faces. But then when I turn and face the congregation, or you're facing me, and we welcome this infant or adult into the household of God, the joy, the smiles that I see on your faces. And we're invited into that moment again where we hear, we experience, we know the voice of God saying, you are my child, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Where we know once again the power, the immense power of baptism to transform us, to fill us with grace so that we may go out and transform the world. In this season of Epiphany, we are going to proclaim the baptismal covenant every week as a reminder so we can get in touch and stay in touch with how God and man came together on earth, how we too have received that grace, we have that spark of divinity within us that is called to show that grace and that love out into the world. And so I invite you, as we say the baptismal covenant every week, to think about the power of water to transform, the power of the spirit to transform, the power of God's love and grace to transform not only you, but for you then to transform the world. Amen. <laughs>